We have more than 2,000 people serving parole eligible life sentences in Maryland. That means that they were sentenced with the understanding that if they proved themselves inside, they would have a meaningful opportunity to return to their communities and their families. Because of our political system and because of a unique requirement that the governor approve parole for any life firm, that is a promise that we have failed to keep. And the result is great human costs and financial costs to Maryland's communities and taxpayers. When it, I want to just highlight some of our key findings from the report. It cost us, um, just highlighting just the people that we have profiled in the report, it costs several million dollars a year to keep these people incarcerated. These are people who the parole commission has determined were ready to return to their communities. Uh, lifers are often actually low risk groups in returning to communities. There's research out there showing that they're less likely to reoffend than others. Maryland has one of the worst track records in terms of the number of people serving life sentences who were used at the time of their crimes. We have one of the largest populations of youth serving life sentences in Maryland. And now, because our parole, because even though they have parole eligible sentences, because of our bro broken system, they are functionally serving life without parole. Something that the Supreme Court has said requires very strict controls that have not been applied because that's not the conditions under which they were sentenced. The, the population of white in Maryland is elderly and aging, particularly those who have been recommended. The average age of lifers who are recommended for release but still inside is 60 years old. All but two of those people are 50 years or older. We also have extraordinary racial disparities. We are the highest, we have the highest rate of black lifers in the country according to, uh, based on available records. About 77% of all Maryland lifers are black, compared to about 30% of Maryland's general population. And we are also the worst in the country when it comes to the rate of the uh, racial disparities for juvenile lifers. 84% of juveniles serving life in Maryland are African American. That ties us with Alabama for the rate of racial disparity. All of these findings, but more importantly, the compelling stories that are included in this report demonstrate that Maryland is due for a change and it's time for us to, to make parole practices conform to sound policy, not political rhetoric.